Today, we're going to be taking a look at the game Spheres of Life Mythical Forest by Joyful Games. This is a 2-7 player card game that takes roughly about 20-30 to 30 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Spheres of Life, you are going to be playing as a hero protecting the forest. You're going to do that by gathering cards into your hand, selecting them from a tableau, placing them down as sets, and of course, at the end of the game, scoring them from your hand. Uh, there are a variety of different animals, whether they be noble or corrupted, and you're going to be trying to set them and collect them, and at the end of the game, only have noble in your hand. There are three phases in gameplay. There's the day, night, and dream phase, and those will play out throughout the entire game until the deck has been removed. When the deck's last card is revealed, then instantly a dream phase will trigger, and you'll rinse and repeat that dream phase one time, and then you'll score. You'll score for sets, you'll score for cards in hand, and you'll take negative points for any corrupted animals in your hand. And the player with the most points is considered the most uh, valiant protector of the forest, and the one who eventually wins the game. Let's take a look at how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game Spheres of Life, the first thing that you're going to do is determine the number of players playing the game. If you're playing a two-player game, there is a special variant. Otherwise, in a three to seven player game, go ahead and follow along on the rules. Now, what you're going to do to begin with is take the different types of cards out of the box here. Uh, you're going to be taking out these specific cards and making a deck out of them. The first are action cards, noble animals, and corrupted animals. Take all of these cards, shuffle them all up, and that will be your main deck for the game. You're also going to have phase cards, day, night, and dream. Take each of these cards and set them up in that order and give them to the first player. The first player is going to be the player who chose the Wind Master. The Wind Master is always going to be the first player and is going to receive these phase cards. And each player is going to select one of the unique adventurers in the game. After each player has an adventure and one player, the Wind Master, has the phase cards, each player is going to draw three cards from the Spheres of Life deck, and you're going to give each player one of these player aid cards to help them understand the phases of the gameplay. Then, the game is ready to begin, and you're going to start with the day phase. Read along and continue. Well, let's explain it. Gameplay for Spheres of Life is actually quite simple. There are three phases in the game, and after each phase, these cards are going to pass to the next player, and they will start as the first player for that phase. Once all three phases have finished, you're simply going to rinse and repeat by going back to day, night, and dream. Ah, that's done. Day, night, and dream. And you'll continue. The day phase is the first phase of play, and it's the phase the Wind Master is going to take. During the day phase, you're going to first openly set cards on the table. It'll be the same as the number of players. So in a three-player game, you'll take three cards from the Steers of Life deck and place them face up on the table in front of all players. Then, the Wind Master will be the first that starts. They can take one of any card on the field that is face up and put it in their hand. The next player is then going to get an opportunity to take a card. And finally, the last player. And thusly, there should be no cards left on the table. If you are playing a two-player variant, however, instead of just playing equal to the number of players, you're actually going to pull out six cards. And then the first player will get three, and the next player will get three. After that, you're going to go ahead and take one card from the deck for each player in a three to seven player game. If you're playing a two-player game, however, you're going to go ahead and take three cards. So in a three to seven player game, each player is going to get two cards. And in a two player game, each player will get six. Quite a difference. Once this is done, the day phase is going to be complete and you're going to go to the night phase. In the night phase, you're gonna openly set cards on the table equal to twice the number of players. In this case, it's going to be six cards. If it's a two player game, it will be 12 cards. Once the cards have been set out, then, starting with the new first player, the player to the uh, left of the uh, wind, wind Master, is going to be the person who starts. So they're going to go ahead and select up to two cards from their hand to discard. If they have maybe a corrupted animal or an action card they don't want, they can choose to discard them. Up to two though, otherwise they don't have to. And then they also can take up to two, based on the number that they discarded, uh, from the face up tableau area. In this case, they can take these two cards. And each player internal order will be able to do that. Maybe this player doesn't want to discard any, and so they don't take any. And this card player might just want to go ahead and discard one card, in which case they will just take one. If there are any face up remaining cards on the table after everyone has had a chance to discard and or draw, then these cards are going to go into the discard pile. That will end the night phase, and we will come to the dream phase. 
Now in the dream phase, at any time, you can play action cards. Players cannot overlap action cards, except in the case of countering a card. There are certain cards that will let you prevent a player from playing something, but otherwise, you're just simply gonna say, I'd like to play a card, in which case somebody else, after that card is resolved, can say, I'd like to play a card. And you can go back and forth, back and forth, playing as many of these cards as you want. This is the only phase in which you can actually use these action cards. Players will take turns also taking one action. So the player who starts with the phase cards will get to, at any point in time, to start the round off, uh, take one of three actions. Action one is steal. They can randomly select one card from a player's hand and take it. The other option is gift. You can choose a card from your hand, maybe this corrupted sheep, and give it to somebody else. And finally, exchange. This is one that's not often used, but can be useful. Hey, I have a noble eagle. Does anyone have a noble butterfly? In which case you can exchange those two cards. And after they've taken one of those actions, they will pass. Now, just because they've passed doesn't mean they can no longer play action cards. They can play them throughout the entire dream phase, but it means that their action is over and now the next player has priority to take their action. Once all three players have taken their actions, then the dream phase is over. A few things to know about the dream phase as well. On a dream phase, if you have three of either corrupted or noble animals of the exact same type, you can bank them. Banking them will allow you to score additional points and it protects them from all, all cards and abilities throughout the game. So if you want, you can say, I have three noble eagles. I will place these three out. These are now protected and I'm going to score six points for them. You can also score additional points for uh, the corrupted characters as well. You will score three points if you have all three out. But otherwise, if they're in your hand at the end of the game, you will get negative points. The last thing that you can do in any of the phases, and this is like a, an action that can take place at any point in time, is use your character ability. Each character has its own unique ability, like for instance, take another player's cards, look at them, select two, and place them in that player's hand, thusly organizing it just until the end of the round, which means they can no longer rearrange their cards. So that maybe, for instance, I could play my special character and then choose to steal from them, actually getting the exact card that I want. Then, once again, it would go to the day phase, and the player uh, to the left of the previous player is going to start. And you're gonna go ahead and flip over the cards once again, and players are going to be able to choose cards, and so on and so forth. Eventually the deck will empty. The moment the deck empties, no matter what phase it is, a, a dream phase will trigger. So if, for instance, it triggers during a dream phase, then you get another dream phase. In which case you can play your action cards, you can bank any sets that you might have, and then, when it's all over and done with and everybody has taken one of their actions, the game will end. And you will score points with the cards in your hand. For every action card you have left in your hand, it's going to be worth a negative point. For every single noble animal, you will score one point. If you have a pair of them, you'll get four points. And if you have three, you'll get nine points. So, you can make successful sets of three, because there are only three of each type in the main deck, uh, at the end of the game. And the same is said as far as negative points for the corrupted animals. If you have a corrupted sheep, minus one point. If you have two of them, minus four. And if you have three, negative nine. You'll add all your points based on your corrupted and noble banked characters, guaranteed points, sets of, uh, for three for sets of the uh, corrupted ones and sets of three for the noble score you six. And then you also check your hand and you'll add all those points together and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. Spheres of Life is a hand management game and a tableau management game. Your main objective is to collect corrupted or noble animals in sets before the game ends and select one set every dream phase and place it face up on your field. Thusly, it will score you points at the end of the game. And at the end of the game, you'll also be checking your hand. You never want to have corrupted animals in your hand at the end of the game and they're only useful if you have sets of them, so otherwise you might want to get rid of them, um, and you're trying to score high value cards. But the danger is, if you have a lot of noble animals in your hand, or sets of them, players can steal them. They can take actions to steal cards, or make you discard cards, or potentially even draw negative cards. And so it's like, do I want to hold on to this set? It's so early in the game, maybe it's worth banking it as six points, as opposed to trying to hold them throughout the entire game for the extra three. This is a game of phases. There's the day phase where it's kind of a 
pick one, draw one phase, there's the night phase where it's a discard up to two, draw up to two phase, and then there's the dream phase where it's all the actions are played, all your action cards will be playing, your apple of life and your orbs of fire and water and time, and you're trying to like complete your hand, search the deck for certain types of creatures, utilize your special legendary hero ability, once a game, and manipulate your hand so that it is the best possible hand you can have by the time that the deck runs out. Players are going to utilize certain strategies in the game. For instance, maybe one player is going specifically for all the corrupted animals and trying to complete as many sets of them as possible, removing them from the deck, allowing them to only hold blue cards at the end of the game. Other players might select to grab as many noble animals as possible and dump a lot of the corrupted animals from their hand, consistently trying to keep their hand like kind of rigged to the point where it's always going to have good stuff no matter what happens at the end. It just might not be the most set value. Sometimes people are going to want to use these action cards or save them. There's certain cards that will let you uh, block an ability or an action like this Apple of Life here. And there are others that will allow you to reset the dream or change the day to night or night to day or being able to choose a player and making them draw an extra card from the deck or draw one and discard one. And maybe players will draw a bunch of these cards and just kind of hold them, hold onto them until the very end where they just start dropping these cards to formulate a hand that will then allow them to score a lot of points. It's a very simple game. It's not overly complex. You know what you're trying to do. Get as many blue sets as possible, regardless of if they're on the field during the dream phase or at the end of the game. But there's a lot of nuance in the game as well. Utilizing your hero and abilities at certain times makes a value, can make a really high value in your gameplay. The artwork in this game is beautiful. I love the different animals. I love the stylization of each of them and they feel unique. Uh, I love the different pieces of like ability, like, like, like the apples and whatnot and the style inside there. You have a, an apple that has like this kind of tree of life inside of it. Each of these like feels and looks like what they're trying to represent. I feel like I'm a noble hero trying to rescue the animals of the forest and avoid the more corrupted animals unless I can save them before time elapses. The art overall is stunning. One of my favorite pieces of artwork this year in a card game, for sure. Uh, additionally, the gameplay. With a two-player game, it's made to speed the game up. You're going to be having six cards, take three and draw three, and then 12 cards and discard up to six and gather up to six. And so this deck's going to run pretty quickly through a two-player game, uh, which is a good idea. Like the way they made the two-player variant works pretty well, and it plays pretty well at two players as well. I had a good time playing with Callie my first time learning the game at two players. Now that is to say, this game definitely plays better with more players. It starts incorporating that need to be able to swap cards with players, how you choose to steal when players play certain action cards. I kind of only really wish that they had a better form for like playing these instant type ability cards. Cause sometimes I'll play a card and then me and Callie or me and John are both gonna go, oh, I wanna play this. And we both wanna play at the same time. And there's no really way to resolve this kind of stuff. And basically, all I said was the best way I could think to do it is if you are the current player on the dream phase, you have priority to play actions until you pass, in which way it goes clockwise. And I think that will clear things up a bit. So if I have the dream phase card, it is my priority until I take my action, which is to swap, gift, or steal. And once I do that, the next player is going to have priority. And because the next dream phase that occurs is not going to be me, it'll be somebody else, it's a good way to kind of switch it on its head to allow somebody else to have priority. So when you play these action cards, it makes a difference. And that being said, other than that, it really, really works really well. The dream phase is kind of like the main aspect of the game. The other two phases are all, all about like hand management and like collecting what you need. And then the bulk of the gameplay is in the dream phase where you're playing a set down, you're playing your actions, you're utilizing your abilities, and you're finalizing what your hand's going to look like for the next round. It's a wonderful little game. I really, really like Spheres of Life. I love playing this with a lot of players because it opens up a lot more opportunities and things that can happen throughout the game. Uh, the game plays fairly quickly, about 20 minutes, regardless of how many players you are playing, just because of how many cards get drawn out of the deck and the two-player variant, of course. And yeah, so I love the gameplay. I love the art. It really worked as far as theme goes for a card game. Uh, and I just like the fact that it had a variety of the different character abilities. 
Yeah, there's almost nothing I really didn't like about this game other than trying to grasp how I wanted to like structure what I wanted to do in the game. I wasn't exactly sure like, do I want the corrupted animals? Uh, do I want to just hold noble animals? And once I started to like get a feel for it after about three or four rounds, I was like, oh, like it really depends on what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I really love that fact of the game. So if you're looking for a card game that's a little bit of tableau management, a lot of hand management, and unique phases that cycle throughout the game and have different features and functions, then definitely check out Mythic Spheres of Life Mystical, Mythical Forest. The name is kind of a, a, a slog, but otherwise uh, it, it's a really, really solid game. And I strongly urge you to take a look at it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sears of Life, Mythical Forest. If you're interested, you can go ahead and check the link in the description where you can go ahead and purchase the game for yourself. Additionally, if you'd like, you can check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we show off and play games just like this one. And this one would actually be a really great candidate for a live stream game. We do Wednesday Whatnots in which we sell games and talk about games and play games there as well. And if you would like, you can go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe with the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out. We do greatly appreciate it. If you think we earned it, if you watch more than one of our videos, or maybe just got you interested in the game, then it might just pay off for you and of course for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to venturing into the mythical forest with you next time.